there's only one sport that combines the raw intensity of athletic competition with the elegance and grace of ballet. World Championship Figure Skating. Welcome to World Champions on Ice. We'll follow the current men's superstars. Kurt Browning, Victor Petrenko, Todd Eldridge, Christopher Bowman, Elvis Stoiko, and many more as they strive for perfection on ice. We'll also treat you to a visual feast of the finest in ladies' competition. Christy Yamaguchi, Nancy Kerrigan, Tanya Harding, Midori Ito, Oksana Bayul, and Surya Bonali. Then you'll meet the reigning stars of ice dancing, Isabel and Paul Duchesnay, Alexander Julin and Maya Usova, and Marina Klamova and Sergei Ponomarenko. They'll prove that skating is a perfect blend of artistic craftsmanship and athletic skill. If you have any doubts about how athletic this sport really is, watch this. Now, let's take a rinkside look at some of the elite members of a very select club, the men of world figure skating. Since the age of five, Christopher Bowman has spent his whole life in a skating rink, sacrificing his childhood but never really growing up. For this one-time can't-miss U.S. skater, it has been a year of prayer A year of tears and agony. A year of inner search. I wind up sitting at home, like looking at my skate bag saying, I don't, I don't want to go skating. I don't want to go to the rink and uh, put in that day in, day out grind and the discipline that it takes. It's just not worth it when I have to feel this much pain as a human being. Probably one of the most naturally gifted skaters is Christopher Bowman of the United States. Bowman gives it everything he's got. Ever the crowd pleaser, he knows how to play to an audience. But in a heartbeat, all of the hours, the pain, and the hard work that went into this flawless performance is wiped away. Bowman, a man whose biography is full of injuries, wretches his knee and ankle, and is in tremendous pain. Another athlete might have called it quits, but he is determined to get through the rest of his routine. Although the injury dashed his hopes of a medal, on that day, Christopher Bowman was a champion. 
This world champion left home at the age of 10 in search of a skating goal. He's traveled a long way from his Cape Cod home, where his father is a commercial fisherman. He's Todd Eldridge, another U.S. champion. Like Kurt Browning, Todd Eldridge has the power to reach great heights in his jumps. He almost seems to pause in midair before he lands. How does it feel? Oh, it feels great. I skated, I skated probably the program this year. No, it was great. Couldn't ask for anything more. You knew that if you were going to get a bronze, you had to nail the best uh, program of your life. Did you feel that pressure going on the ice? A little bit, yeah. I felt. I, I heard the marks from the other skaters. I heard they skated well. And I knew that I had to go out there and do hard work. And that's exactly what I did. The following year, the magic just didn't seem to be there. He spent most of the season nursing a nagging back injury, preventing him from having the time to improve on the previous year's victory. But we haven't seen the last of Eldridge. He's a man with a mission, and we can expect many more winning performances in the near future. Some say he's invincible, a national hero, a world champion. He's high-flying Kurt Browning of Canada, an amateur athlete making six figures a year. And here are some of the reasons why. Kurt Browning, a part-time hockey player, had a dream come true scrimmage with the LA Kings. He has earned Canada's Male Athlete of the Year Award, beating out hockey heroes Marc Messier and the great one, Wayne Gretzky. barely edging past his rivals. In the following year, he provided the same thrills. today can inspire a crowd like Browning. Half a world away in the Ukraine city of Odessa, Viktor Petrenko, the first Russian skater to win an Olympic gold medal, wonders if now is the time to be number one in the world. I want to be first in a world, and I want to be first in Olympics. It's, it's just my dream. In 1992, Petrenko has his work cut out for him. The Canadians have left him little room for mistakes. This could very well be his last amateur performance. He is planning on turning professional after this one. He wants to end his amateur career on the highest possible note.
while some said you didn't have a good long program, maybe you weren't the best in the world. Does this show everyone that you are indeed the best in the world? Well, uh, the, this uh, evening I did the, my long program, uh, how I think uh, good enough for this time, and I think if the judges give me, gave it to me first place, I think I'm the best now for this time. He is simply known as the Terminator, Canada's Elvis Stoiko, an ice skating champion and a black belt master in karate, the heir apparent to Browning's throne. What's good about it is I get another chance at, at t overtaking him, which, which, is, which is good because he's still, everyone's eye is still number one, right? So instead of giving the, the crown handed down, it's, it's more interesting to see if I can take it. His father is from Yugoslavia, his mother from Hungary. They met and married in Canada. They were big Elvis Presley fans and they named their son after the king. He's never skated to Presley music, but he is considering it. In this 1992 performance, his technical routine could have knocked Browning through the ropes. But in terms of artistic impression, he couldn't come close to Kurt Browning's originality. And in 1993, he shows enormous improvements in the essential areas of style and grace. Elvis's outstanding performance won him the silver medal, only to be outdone by fellow countryman Kurt Browning. Kurt Browning stages a gutsy salute to the movie Casablanca. This is an elegant number that should be seen in its entirety to be fully appreciated. So sit back and let Kurt Browning skate you through movie history.
Kurt Browning proves to the world that his perfect union of technical ability and creative brilliance make him the most formidable skater of his time. Ice dancing has launched figure skating into a whole new dimension. They've come to recognize that it's more than just a sport. It's a theatrical event. You may ask, what is the difference between ice dancing and pairing? In ice dancing, the skaters are not allowed to release each other, except for a quick change of position. In pairs, you'll notice that the skaters let go of each other, skate in isolation, and do all of the moves together. Some of the best-known teams in pairing are Natalia Mishkatunik and Artur Dmitriev, and Isabel Brasur and Lloyd Eisler. This is where it all began, ballroom dancing. Ice dancing combines the traditional forms and styles of ballroom dance with the beauty and grace of ballet. Torval and Dean brought that art onto the ice and in 1984 changed ice dancing forever. Now, Christopher Dean is orchestrating a new era. His protégés, the Duchesnais, took dance to an absolute extreme and the fans loved it. Meanwhile, the Soviets were still in the ballroom, winning the gold, but not the hearts of the crowd, which only adds to the controversy surrounding the sport of ice dancing. I don't know whether this is theater or whether it is uh, athleticism or is it contemporary dance or is it ballroom dance, a classical dance? Where are we in this uh, event? It's a good question, <laughs> and I think what it is is all of the above. And what the judges are looking for is a new way to judge this event so that it does not restrict creativity but also does not compromise technical ability. Well, let's bring it down to personalities. Perhaps that's the way to explain it, Robin Cousins. We've got Klima von Pomerenko uh, from the Soviet Union, and then the Duchesnais, the French Canadians who compete for France, who are totally different, apparently. Well, the Soviet style was always towards the more traditional, almost ballroom style, with a more obvious tempo in music, a more obvious style in dance halls. Whereas the Duchesnais, with the help of Torval and Dean, and specifically Christopher Dean, with the, his creative creative choreography have pushed every single boundary of ice dance in every possible direction. But this year, of course, Klimova Pomerenko came out in the European Championships and beat the Duchesnais at their own game. And what's happening now is we're finding this little bit of a tug of war of ice dance, not only between the skaters and the ISU, but between the rules and also the judges now. You don't have to understand judging to appreciate ice dancing. When you combine the influences of ballroom, ballet and theater with the speed and flow of ice, put that to music with a man and a woman, well, you know, the <laughs> results can be remarkable. All right, you talked me into it, you fast-talking <laughs> son of a gun. Maya Usova and Alexander Zhulin are a husband and wife team from Moscow. These just might be the best two ice dancers in the world.
Freedom of expression has become a big part of ice dancing. And here are some people who really decided to express themselves. Inspired by the Indianapolis 500, Elizabeth Punselin and Jared Swallow imitate race cars, driving through the test trials, pit stops, and of course, the race itself, which results in a crash. The technical brilliance and originality of Marina Klimova and Sergei Ponomarenko adds a real sense of drama to ice dancing. Finland's Susanna Rakamo and Petri Koko perform a multi-leveled routine that not only spoofs a night at the ballet, but quite possibly some of their fellow competitors. It is executed with a great sense of humor, precision, and artistic proficiency. Known to some as the rebels of ice dancing, Isabel and Paul Duchesne took the skating world by storm with an exciting, aggressively modern approach to a classic sport. But their fans received them with open arms. This controversial brother and sister team began where England's Jane Torval and Christopher Dean left off. Now, let's meet the ladies of championship figure skating. Here's Dick Enberg with an insider's view of superstar Midori Ito. Midori, 
the personification of the Japanese enigma. In her quiet moments away from the ice, calm and reflective, in contrast on the ice, she explodes with energy. Power. Known for her incredible jumping talent, Midori has literally taken skating to new heights. The engaging Ito is affectionately referred to by her Japanese fans as Hawaii. Adorably cute. And she is hard to resist as she has been from her very early years. There are two big constants in Midori's life. The ability to hit her jumps, she hit her first triple at age eight. And her coach, Machiko Yamada. They've been together since Midori started her skating career at age four. Together, they've created a phenom that emerged in the 1989 world when Midori Ito became the first woman ever to perform the triple axel. Her athletic prowess has separated her from her skating peers. The world championships require a skater combining a high-tech wizardry and traditional artistic grace. Winning characteristics taken from the country for whom she proudly loves to compete. Is it okay? Okay! <laughs> Although Ito has had her share of glory, she has also been on a collision course that forces her to rise above adversity. She begins her 1991 routine very strongly, considering that she has bruised ribs from her earlier accident in practice. In attempting a triple combination, Ito skates too close to the wall and crashes into the television cameras. Miraculously, she leaps right out of the camera well, practically without missing a beat. Ito is determined to finish her program. This poised and calm young lady even has a sense of humor about her predicament. There's a smile on her face. Midori Ito proves that she's a lot tougher than a skating rink wall. And although she does not win a medal, she does win the hearts of the fans, enthusiastically showing their support for a truly great champion. Midori Ito and Tanya Harding, the pride of Portland, Oregon, share a major accomplishment. They are the first two women to successfully complete triple axles. This amazing feat propelled Tanya into the record books. And even superstar Christy Yamaguchi had to applaud from the sidelines at this amazing feat. In her 1991 performance, she lands the best triple axle of her life. Tanya skated an impeccable performance that had the crowd on its feet, and she left the rink owning the silver medal. How did she feel about landing a jump that most of the other women skaters don't own? I had this little niche back here. It was saying, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And I was saying, come on, I can do this. I've been working hard. I've landed this all week. I can do this. And this little thing, oh my god, oh my god. No, I'm going to do it. Boom, and I landed it. So it's con. It's not there anymore. But the 1992 World Championship did not prove to be a very successful experience. After missing an attempted jump, she backs off her scheduled performance. Tanya just didn't have the magic, the presence, nor the power of the previous year. She has great beauty, both her appearance and her skating, and that uh, brings a lot of attention to her that the average skater doesn't get. Looking more like a model than a skater, Nancy Kerrigan makes her way out onto the ice in the 1991 competition. Her mother is legally blind. She has to sit that close to the monitor to see her daughter perform. Only five minutes before her routine, Kerrigan was virtually under no pressure because she wasn't in line to medal. But because of Midori Ito's low scores, a window of opportunity opened and Kerrigan made her bid for winning her first world championship. Kerrigan seemed to be sailing smoothly through her graceful program until this untimely spill. Now she would have to skate flawlessly to still have a chance to win. She has willpower. That's how she landed this jump. Look at her fight for it, just grinding that edge to swing through. 
continuing to skate with deadly accuracy, culminating with this, her signature move, Kerrigan invades Munich and captures the bronze. Leaving Munich a medalist, the USA's Nancy Kerrigan sets her sights on the next world championships in Oakland, California. Particularly in this contest, there was such a heavy emphasis placed on jumping that most of the top women fell during their routines. This could have been especially detrimental to Nancy, whose performance is always geared more toward the dance elements of the sport rather than the athleticism. But rising to the occasion, she finishes strongly enough to impress the judges and pulls off another victory, this time going home with a silver medal. Surya Bonali, not only the first black woman ever to win a European title, but also this teenager, recognized for her effortless jumping, is known as a girl of mystery. Her adoptive mother is responsible for having circulated a story that lists Surya's birthplace as somewhere in Africa, but in fact, Surya was born and raised in France. This was an unnecessary attempt at building a publicity campaign to place her in the public eye. Why was this unnecessary? Because Surya is a skating phenomenon, and this performance in the 1993 championships resulted in a silver medal. That is the highest finish for a French woman since 1952. It is hard to believe how much this youngster from the Ukraine has accomplished in such a short time. Oksana Bayul's childhood was filled with tragedy. She lost her father when she was very young and her mother just two years ago. She now lives with her coach and somehow finds a depth of spirit that gives her unlikely confidence. I want to win the world, but I really want to entertain the audience. Her ability to excite the audience certainly materialized at the European Championships. Awesome Oksana captures the crowd with her unique charm and incredible jumps. Her adult ability wrapped in youthful innocence and vulnerability makes her irresistibly attractive. Her graceful and flirtatious style belies her years. A shooting star from the Ukraine, Oksana Bayul. Going to be high, but not too high. She didn't have any jump combination. Czech judge and the Polish judge saw it at 5.8. A low of 5.6 from China and Japan, and a 5.5 five from Great Britain. The only thing that can beat that performance is jump combinations. <laughs> Tears of joy and uh, exhaustion. The emotions uh, pouring out of Bayul. Look at those marks, five fantastic. nines. Fantastic. Just fantastic. 15 in, years old. In position to medal, it could be gold. And it was. 15-year-old Oksana Bayul takes it all in pride. This fairy tale started a long time ago. Christy was opening eyes before she was even a teenager. And when she blossomed on the national scene, the skating world cheered a new star. Christy doesn't have the huge jumps that some of the other competitors have. She relies on her grace, her beauty, her artistry. Christy's jumps are clean and precisely accomplished. She glides through the air and lands with pinpoint accuracy. on her face suggests that Christy might have a clue as to how well she's just done. And in contrast, the look on Tanya Harding's face also says it all. In the small world of skating, Christy trains in Edmonton on the same ice as Kurt Browning. He would take her on drives and make her repeat after him, I will be world champion. I will be world champion. Christy, 
You win the gold, an American sweep. How do you feel? Uh, I don't know. It's just a big surprise, and um, I'm very happy the U.S. just stick right here. And what about your gold medal? Uh, oh, I can't believe it yet. <laughs> you did prove you didn't have to have the triple axle. All right. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> When the other skaters were on the ice, you weren't out here watching. I know you were probably keeping track in the back, but you saw them sort of leave the door open. Did you know if you skated well, you could win? No, um, no not really. I didn't realize how, what the other skaters did, so I just wanted to go out there and skate as hard as I can, and I was happy with that. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Yet, the glory of the previous year's accomplishments fades quickly as a new world championship approaches. I know what I can do, and I've trained all year for the world championships. And, you know, whether I do what people expect me to do or not, it's okay. <laughs> what would assure that victory is a successful triple axel. Christy, before you do it, let's just see yourself doing it. Close your eyes for just a second. Close your eyes for just a second. Feel yourself doing it in the air. But seeing yourself doing it and actually doing it aren't quite the same thing. I don't think I have to absolutely land a triple axel um, because there are other sides of skating that are very important. Let's see how her 1992 performance compares to her previous victory. Proof positive that Yamaguchi is a gutsy competitor is pointed up right here. Yes, the leading lady of figure skating took a fall, but only because she attempted a jump that she has never landed in competition. A true champion trying to reach new heights at a moment when there couldn't possibly be more pressure.
Christy, uh, this was really the first time in international competition that you were expected to win. How did you deal with that uh, additional pressure? Well, I wasn't really thinking of expecting to win. I wanted to come in and skate well in front of a lot of friends and family, and I'm glad I was able to keep it together so well. What's at stake for these athletes? It's in their expressions. From a quick prayer to the judges, to the frustration of a failed attempt. A look at their faces says it all. Thank you for joining us on our journey through the greatest moments of the World Figure Skating Championships. We hope you've enjoyed World Champions on Ice. See you at the ring. Now is your chance to purchase this special commemorative t-shirt. The retail price is $15.95, but through this exclusive offer, you can have this World Champions on Ice t-shirt for only $7.95. It's 100% cotton and now available in all sizes. Send a check or money order for $10.85, which includes shipping and handling, and mail it to Laurel Canyon Productions, P.O. Box 691882, Los Angeles, California, 90069 California residents at 8.25% sales tax. We ship worldwide. Please allow two to four weeks for delivery and be sure to include your shirt size.